If someone is already 80 years old and they go, well, what's the point, what's the benefit, there's really, I'm already 80, what's the difference? And on the reverse side, if someone goes, I'm 20, when I'll eat whatever I want, and then when I'm 40, I'll start cleaning up my diet because people don't really have heart attacks in their 20s and 30s. So for someone who's very young or very old and saying, what's the difference, is there any significant benefit that you could think of for why they should change? Yes. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm going to share a story with you. It happened to an employee in our office, um, and this, her mother was 88. And so let's take an extreme case here. 88 years old with terminal cancer, and fortunately had a doctor who said, we don't really have a cure for this, and so I think the most important thing for you to do is to enjoy the rest of your life, not to spend it in and out of hospitals getting treatment. And she'd never eaten well, this woman, but my then employee decided that um, she would take some time off of work and make sure that her mother ate well for the remaining time she had to live. So she'd ask the doctor, how long do you think I have? He says, pretty aggressive, I'd say, really, realistically, 90 to 120 days. Okay, that's a terrible prognosis. So her daughter takes the time, starts feeding her optimally, not a single bite of food going into her body that isn't optimal. And she did indeed die 18 months later, not three months later. Stayed at home the whole time. And we were in contact, her daughter and I, over this period of time. And for 17 out of the 18 months, living in her house, playing cards with her girlfriends, took a couple trips, you know. And, um, and then the last month or so, it just went straight downhill. And the point of telling you the story is that even when you have a terminal diagnosis, you're better off doing this. Because wouldn't you say 18 months is better than three, 17 months of very high quality living is better than none, even if the outcome doesn't actually change in the end. So working backwards from there, I think that people underestimate, you know, Dr. Montgomery was talking about, you know, the 102 year old woman coming off, people underestimate how strong and, and incredibly uh, powerful their bodies are even at older ages. And for younger people, the uh, first thing is it, younger people are getting diseases. I mean, I don't know about you guys, I see a lot of people in my office, 25 years old with breast cancer, Crohn's disease. I have, a, I have one who was born with Crohn's disease, born with it, taken to the hospital with a bloody diaper at seven days old. So I think it's a myth that these diseases are occurring in mostly older people now. I think the age is ratcheting down as the bad diet starts earlier and earlier. And so I think what you say to a younger person is, first of all, we may appeal to that person more with what you talk about, which is environmental concerns, animal welfare, because they do think they're kind of impervious. But the second thing is um, you're, just, you're playing Russian roulette with your health when you eat this way. I had a professor in medical school who said, people don't get diseases, they earn them. <laughs> and uh, meal by meal, cigarette by cigarette, drink by drink, argument by argument, then we earn our diseases. And it have, starts in childhood. And uh, that a person who's 20 years old uh, has huge control over what's uh, going to befall them uh, during their life. That needs to be made clear to them. And as Dr. Popper said, we're now seeing uh, clogged arteries and high blood pressure in, in people in their teens, in their 20s, in their 30s. These diseases start early, early, early. And, uh, and as already said, on the end of life, the, the body has such amazing resilience and healing power within it. If you just give it the fuel that it uh, you know, is looking for, uh, age uh, becomes semi-irrelevant, as you just heard that story. Uh, the, the version that I get frequently uh, from my patients, well, doc, you got to die some. I'll, I'll eat my cheeseburgers and pizzas, and eh, get my heart attack and die. You know, you got to die some. I've been a physician 45 years. I have seen that that scenario sometimes plays out. But Mother Nature has other tricks up her sleeves. And uh, what happens is that you get your stroke and you don't die and you spend your next 30 years in a wheelchair drooling with some pretty nurse wiping your backside because you can't reach back there. That does wonderful things for a marriage. That does wonderful things for one's self-esteem. And 
or to get a heart attack, as Dr. Baxter knows well, and lose half your heart muscle. So you get out of breath walking to the mailbox. The world gets pretty small um, and when you're a cardiac cripple on that level. And so, um, again, it's, people don't appreciate uh, the complexity of the human body and what uh, nature can have in store for them. And I try and make that clear to my patients. This is no laughing matter. This is no game. And you do not want to play medical roulette uh, with your future. And uh, every meal matters. And I show them what happens to their blood when they eat a cheeseburger, how fatty their blood becomes for hours and hours. And during this time, their arteries are getting inflamed and clogged up, and fat is layering out in their abdomen. And Hormones are being changed that set them up for breast cancer and prostate cancer. Again, can't do one thing. And information is powerful. Knowledge is powerful. And once they see that, that blood turns milky white after a, after a cheeseburger. And many, you know, everybody has a wave of fat that goes to their bloodstream. Um, this can make a, make a big impression. So uh, people love to uh, justify their bad habits with a flip remark, et cetera. But um, a, uh, some honest teaching goes a long way. And that's why the media and, and, or, and meetings like this and the internet have such a huge role to play. We don't need um, another study showing that plant-based diets lower high blood pressure. We know that. It's a matter of education now, getting it out into the populace so plant-based nutrition becomes, of course, you know, that's, what you, that's what you eat if you want to be healthy. And young people in the internet uh, have magic uh, when you put them together, and you can spread good ideas with a couple of mouse clicks around the world. So I'm optimistic, uh, but uh, there's no time for complacency, and, and people hide under these little rocks of ignorance and sarcasm, but you need to uncover those rocks and let the sunshine in.